Hey YouTube, it's Patrick, and today I'll be talking about Mt. Gox and all the problems that it's been having and all the negative effects that's been having on the price of Bitcoin. Now, of course, it's really important to remember that Mt. Gox is separate from Bitcoin. So Mt. Gox's security problems aren't Bitcoin security problems. And if you have Bitcoins on a secure wallet or in cold storage, of course, everything's okay. However, all of these negative tension and all these problems on Mt. Gox have resulted in lower prices in Bitcoin, driving it down from a consistent $900 um, price range down to um, about $600. So yeah, it went from about a consistent $900 down to that $600. So of course, this has a lot of people upset, um, losing a lot of their values, and it's basically due to some it seems to be irresponsibility. Now, if you actually go and look on um, Mt. Gox's website itself, the price is down to $135, and that's just due to the fact that they won't let you take Bitcoins out of their website. So anybody that has bought Bitcoins on their website, those Bitcoins are now kind of worthless. So they're trying to sell them for cash, which in turn drives, crashes the price down to about 135. Um, however, there's huge money-making opportunities if you could have sold at the um, eight, um, $700 range and of course bought back in in $100, uh, the $100 range. But of course, Mt. Gox has to come back up online for you to realize those profits. But with all that being said, with this irresponsibility by this owner, uh, Mark Carples, I believe his name is, the founder of Mount, Mount Gox, um, a lot of uh, people are upset with him. And I, I basically break it down to analogy of someone that has a car and that no one else has a car. It's the first person to have a car. And of course, you know, once you show them this car or they hear about this car, they're excited and they want to see it. They want to take, you know, tours in it. They want to, you know, go from point A to point B in this car. So having this car wore Mt. Gox, which is the first Bitcoin exchange, um, you can make a lot of money um, doing so because you're the first one in the market or with having this car. And it's basically like someone told him like, hey, look, uh, Mark, your, your, your car, your, your tire is going flat. He's like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's the security of Mt. Gox. That's basically, in the way the whole website is designed from experts that I've listened to, they basically say that you know, there's, he should have changed it a long, long time ago. It was a small website trying to handle a huge volume, and that's what it would cause all these crashes and all these problems. And he just wasn't putting enough money back into it. Now, whether that is true or not, um, I don't know, but we do know that it, of course, is down and this stuff is happening. So anyway, so you have this, you know, this Mark and he's got this car and someone tells him his tires are flat and he just ignores it. He ignores it and then someone, you know, basically saying, you have no air in your tires, you have to fix this. And he's like, no, I'm fine. And he takes a tour with his little Bitcoin family. And he's driving down the road and he skids off the road and he crashes into a tree and he almost kills everybody. And that's what he's done several times is he almost, um, you know, killed Bitcoin because all this negative news drives on the price and that can really, and something in the, the infancy, the, the beginning of Bitcoin, it, it could really, you know, ruin Bitcoin. But um, it is resilient and it wasn't, you know, it was unrelated to Bitcoin. So luckily, uh, Bitcoin is surviving and they have survived the car crash. Now, hopefully this is enough lesson to this Mark um, uh, guy that, that, that runs this Bitcoin to spend some money to get s some security. If there was Bitcoin loss, he might have to bring in some new investors or some new money to help uh, to replace those losses. But uh, he would have to give up some of the, the future profits to those investors, which... It's an easy solution. It's there, you know, because he, he does have the most popular, um, you know, exchange because it was the first one. And I want to, you know, a lot of people saying like, I help people go to other exchanges and whatnot, and I hope they do too. I, I hope all, all the, a lot of the other exchanges are really successful. However, the reason why people like to go to Mt. Gox is for the action because the ups and downs, you know, the, the, the money-making opportunities, that's why people uh, take that risk. You know, that's why I'm invested in um, Mt. Gox. I have some Bitcoin on there that I'm holding out that he'll reopen and uh, I'll be able to, to get my Bitcoin back. But I knew I took a risk because, you know, there has been um, this problem before, but, there, but there's not that great of money-making opportunity on the other exchanges that at least that I have seen. So with that being said, you know, what's the future of, um, you know, Mt. Gox? I think, you know, it'd be pretty uh, easy for this guy to repair the site, get some new money in, 
um, and get it up and running again. And that's what his intentions are. If you go to the Mount Gox website, you know, they talk about the, hey, you know, Mount Gox customers were trying to fix these issues and reopen. And I heard there's, you know, they're going to be rebranding re themselves. So hopefully that works out. You know, of course, I'm a little bit biased. I want that to work out. And I think that, you know, it will be successful if it can have the action that it used to have, the ups and downs, and that's why it attracts people to that website. So, um, but yeah, I hope you uh, enjoy this video, and I'll see you on YouTube.